Hi there, Miss Laura from BPL here for, for, for virtual story time. Are you guys ready? I hope you're here with me. Uh, before we get started, I want to remind everyone that this Friday, October 29th from 5.30 to 7.30 is the Downtown Spooktacular Trunk or Treat and Street Party, which is put on by us at BPL, the Bartlesville Community Center, Price Tower Art Center, Tower Center at Unity Square, First Presbyterian Church, and many, many more. There will be a trunk or treat, music, games, inflatables, food trucks, so much fun this Friday, 5.30 to 7.30. Then at eight o'clock, there will be a movie shown at the Tower Center of Unity, Tower Center at Unity Square stage. I'm having the Monday mumbles. I can't talk very well. All right, here we go. Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? How are you today? We're gonna start with a story. It's really funny. It's by Mark. Iacolina called, did you eat the parakeet? So it looks like we have a little girl and her kitty cat and her parakeet. Did you eat the parakeet? All right, it looks like she's feeding her parakeet some lunch but then look i think she accidentally left the opening to the cage open and the bird got out i don't think she knows this let's see what happens she sees the empty cage looks at her kitty cat and says did you eat the parakeet he was right there on his tiny seat. He was singing a tune just an hour ago. Did you eat him? I want to know. Where is the parakeet? <laughs> Did you eat the parakeet? Did he become a tasty treat? You usually play so nicely together. Now all that's left is this single feather. Did you eat the parakeet? Did you laugh and say bon appetit? Silly girl, he was such a small and scrawny bird. To eat him would be absurd. Does she know the parakeet is on her head? I don't think she does. Did you eat the parakeet? His, his head? His beak? His wings? His feet? He was quite the dashing, handsome fellow, minty green with a touch of yellow. So what's happening here? There aren't any words on these pages. Looks like the kitty cat is dragging the little girl to the mirror and saying, look at yourself in the mirror. Now she sees where the parakeet is. Oh, you did not eat the parakeet. I'm sorry for getting so carried away, but wait. I haven't seen the mouse all day. <laughs> Do you see the mouse? Little pink mouse. That's funny. All right, let's sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star because I'm going to uh, read you a book about a sort of a star. 
Ready? Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. This book by Patrick McDonald and Naoko Stoop is called Shine. Little Hoshi was a star, a sea star, who lived in the ocean. She's a sea star or a starfish. Every night she would gaze at the twinkling stars in the sky above and make a wish. I wish I were there instead of here, up there where all is fine up there where I would shine. Oh, poor little me, a star stuck in the sea. As the sun rose and the stars disappeared, the tide swept little Hoshi back into the water. I should be floating among the colorful planets, Hoshi thought, as she floated among the colorful coral. Imagine all the unique and wonderful friends you could meet up there, she told all of her unique and wonderful friends. Up there, there are exciting and endless possibilities, she explained to the exciting, endless schools of minnows. Where could you be so, or where could you see something so magnificent down here? She wondered al aloud to the magnificent blue whale. I want to shine, cried little Hoshi. I wish I were there instead of here. Down here, nothing is fine. Down here, I'll never shine. Oh, poor little me, a star stuck in the sea. Everyone tried to cheer her up, but she turned and swam far away. Down, down, down into the deepest waters where she floated to the murky bottom. Little Hoshi gazed out into the darkness until she saw a star. She closed her eyes and made a wish. The star came closer and closer and closer. But it wasn't a star at all. It was an anglerfish with her glowing light. Why are you here and not up there? The anglerfish asked the little sea star. That's what I want to know, replied Hoshi. Oh, could you, would you tell me how you shine? It's my pleasure, said the anglerfish. I shine because I'm happy. Happy to be here, happy to be there, happy to be anywhere, because happiness, my dear, is always found right here. And the anglerfish pointed to her heart and shined, and all her deep sea mates joined in. Ooh-wee, said little Hoshi. Thank you. And she swam up, up, up. Where everyone welcomed her home. She gazed at her colorful, magnificent world and her unique and wonderful friends. And for the first time, she saw so many exciting and endless possibilities. Then little Hoshi looked into her own happy heart and shined.
the end. Got kind of a little Halloween song story for you by Lucille Calandro and Jared Lee. There was an old lady who swallowed a bat. What? There was an old lady who swallowed a bat. I don't know why she swallowed a bat. Imagine that. There was an old lady who swallowed an owl. My oh my, she started to howl. Howl! She swallowed the owl to shush the bat. I don't know why she swallowed the bat. Imagine that. There was an old lady who swallowed a cat. What do you think? Now she's so fat. She swallowed the cat to chase the owl. She swallowed the owl to shush the bat. I don't know why she swallowed a bat. Imagine that. There was an old lady who swallowed a ghost. What do you think? She liked it the most. She swallowed the ghost to catch the cat. She swallowed the cat to catch the owl. She swallowed the owl to shush the bat. I don't know why she swallowed a bat. Imagine that. There was an old lady who swallowed a goblin. It made her so dizzy she started to spin. She swallowed the goblin to scare the ghost. She swallowed the ghost to catch the cat. She swallowed the cat to chase the owl. She swallowed the owl to shush the bat. And I don't know why she swallowed a bat. Imagine that. There was an old lady who swallowed some bones. There were so many she started to groan. Oh, she swallowed the bones to rattle the goblin. She swallowed the goblin to scare the ghost. She swallowed the ghost to catch the cat. She swallowed the cat to chase the owl. She swallowed the owl to shush the bat. I don't know why she swallowed a bat. Imagine that. There was an old lady who swallowed a wizard to cast a spell so she could yell. Trick or treat! Burp. That is so silly. My goodness. Let's see what I have. We'll sing another song. The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. So the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. All right, our last book is by Don Freeman. I like this one. It's called Earl the Squirrel. Do you ever see squirrels in your yard or at the park? Let's see what Earl, the squirrel, is up to. Early one autumn morning, a mother gray squirrel sat talking with her young son, Earl. It is high time you went out and learned how to find some acorns on your own, she said. But Earl didn't know the first thing about finding acorns. So away he sailed to visit his friend, Jill. Good morning, Earl, said Jill. Here's an acorn I've saved for you. Earl was pleased to have found such a big acorn so quickly. His mother would be happy. He twitched and twirled his tail, which was his way of saying, thank you very much. And here's a nutcracker to help you open it, added Jill. Earl scampered home, eager to show his mother what he had found. But when she saw him, she said, Earl, come in here this instant. I want to speak to you. Who ever heard of a squirrel needing a nutcracker? Why, it's absurd, his mother scolded. 
You got it from Jill, didn't you? I'll bet she gave you the acorn, too. That girl is making you into the most spoiled squirrel in the world. Now take that nutcracker right back. Well, you're back so quickly, and you didn't want the nutcracker? Well, never mind. I have an extra special present for you. And she tied a beautiful red scarf neatly around Earl's furry neck. I really made it for my doll, she said, but he wanted you to have it. How proud Earl was of his scarlet scarf. Back home he sailed with his tail unfurled, but when his mother saw the scarf, what do you think she said? Earl, come in here this instant. I want to speak to you. Who ever heard of any of us needing something around our necks to keep us warm? His mother fussed. Now that girl has done it. You are the most spoiled squirrel in the world. Earl knew his mother was right. That night after supper, he tied his scarf into the shape of a sack. While his mother slept, out he crept. Earl wanted to show her that he could find an acorn on his own. All night long, Earl searched in the bright moonlight, under rocks, up in trees, and inside empty old mole holes without finding one solitary single acorn anywhere. By morning, Earl was very tired. In fact, he was all worn out. His ears were getting cold. He tied the scarf around his head. That's better, he said to himself. Maybe that's an old squirrel hole for me to sleep in, thought Earl. He looked inside. But look who was there. Oh, excuse me, said Earl. I didn't know you lived in here. Well, who did you think lived here? Hooted the great horned owl loudly. And who ever saw a squirrel wearing a scarf? My friend Jill gave it to me, Earl said proudly. By the way, could you tell me where I might find an acorn? <laughs> an acorn, hooted the great horned owl. Why, certainly. There's a giant oak tree right over there full of acorns, but I wouldn't go anywhere near if I were a squirrel wearing a scarlet red scarf. Conrad the bull would not like it one bit. You know what bulls do when they see red? They get awfully mad. But Earl didn't hear a word the owl had said about the bull because he was already halfway over to the tree. And look who was snoozing there so peacefully, Conrad. Earl hopped up on top of the bull's burly back. He didn't see Conrad's long, sharp horns. All he saw were acorns galore. Who's that tickling my shoulder? The big bull smoldered. Earl didn't see Conrad's nose. All he saw was a great way to reach the acorns. And all Conrad saw was Earl's scarf. Just then, Conrad got awfully mad. With one flying leap, Earl escaped up into the tree, but his scarf had come unfurled. It slipped off his neck and it dropped. Quick as a flash, Earl reached down and snatched his scarf. Don't you tear my beautiful present, he cried. Conrad snorted and charged with all his might. He charged right into the tree and his horns got stuck. He pulled and yanked until he shook poor Earl out of the tree. Along with hundreds of acorns. Bonk! One fell right on top of his head. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Bull, said Earl politely. I didn't mean to put you to all this trouble. I needed only one acorn, but I guess I'll take two. Tomorrow I'll be back for more. 
After uh, tying two acorns into his scarf sack, Earl threw it over his shoulder and hurried back home as fast as he could scamper. Conrad grunted and groaned until at last, with a powerful yank, he freed his hooves from the tree. Down the hill, the hill he reeled, head over hoofs, until he was out of sight. When Earl arrived home, he presented one of his acorns to his mother. She saw it and said, Earl, come in, come in here this instant. I want to speak to you. Once inside, his mother took a bite, wait, took a bite of her ripe acorn. My, my, this is the most delicious acorn I've ever tasted. How did you find it? Oh, my lucky scarf helped me, said Earl happily. After his mother finished her acorn, he went to pay Jill a visit. On the windowsill, sitting very still, was Jill's doll. After taking out the acorn, Earl tied his scarf around the doll's neck. Here, sir, I don't think I need this anymore. And then Earl gave his tail an extra twirl, and before he swept away, he left the acorn for Jill. The next night, the moon was full, and Earl returned to the giant oak tree. Thanks to Conrad, there were plenty of acorns scattered on the ground for tomorrow. But tonight, Earl scampered up a high branch and picked one for himself. That's the end of Earl the Squirrel. So don't forget this Friday night, big Halloween event, 5.30 to 7.30, trunk or tree, inflatables, games, food, music, lots and lots of fun right here on um, right between the library community center price tower and first presbyterian church i'll be there uh telling scary stories and giving away free books and giving away some other goodies so i hope to see you there friday night <laughs>